This is Twit. John uh, sent us a video. Now, J John is a, a reporter mm -hmm. uh, in Bozeman. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a little long, but I feel like it's worth it. Um, Let's enjoy. Yes. Uh, I have my cheese latte. I'm ready. Okay, you have time. Sit back and enjoy. Hi there. I'm John Shearer. I'm a television reporter, and this is Yellowstone National Park. It's where I work one or two days a week. And wow. Yeah, that's a herd of bison right over there. They, so just, they just walked right up here. You can see some of the hoof prints right over here. I decided to let them kind of wander on their way. After all, they outweighed me by about a thousand pounds each. This is off-grid territory. It's off-cell. There's no 4G. There's no cloud. There's no nothing out here. And you know, even in places where the grid is not that far away, you can't just walk into a ranger station or even a visitor center and say, hey, I need an outlet and a desk right now. Where can I go? <laughs> They'll just laugh at you. So most of the time, you're just working out of the front seat of the car anyway. So I'm intrigued by the iPad Pro when I hear about the computing power it has. And that could be useful to me. It could help me reduce the size of my kit. What Holy I'd cow. Uh, like to know about is the chance that Apple may port some version of Final Cut Pro, which is what I added on. I'd uh, love to see uh, a Final Cut version that has at least three video channels and at least three audio channels. A few more would be great, but you know, that could be gotten away with. And the USB-C port, I think, offers a lot of promise. I, I already have all the USB-C adapters for the MacBook Pro, um, and I'd love to be able to plug some of those in, uh, read the cards, <laughs> of course, um, but also be able to access a hard drive, which would include some keyboard shortcuts, because I do use the keyboard shortcuts. And, I, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to run off of a keyboard. Maybe if there's a touch equivalent, that would be fine. Touch screen interface is fine, though I would probably use the Apple Pencil because when I'm trying to look at video on the screen, I don't want my fingers smudging up the screen all of the time. Um, I uh, would also have to have some version of compressor on there as well mm -hmm. because I have to export in specific formats. Oh, and none of this, everything's in the cloud stuff. Out here, you need physical connections because there really isn't anything else. So that's what I'm interested in finding. That would make life for me here in the park a little bit easier. I'd like to find out what you know about it. Yeah, I mean, there are other editing programs you might want to take a look at. I think iMovie does a lot of what you want. He wants three audio tracks. He wants three uh, or more video tracks. I think he could probably do that in iMovie. Um, what about Luma Fusion? That's the one I was going to suggest. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I, iMovie is fine for me. Um, but I, I put out on Twitter if anybody uses Luma Fusion and how it compares to Final Cut Pro. There's a, apparently a couple people, uh, Jonathan Morrison and Christopher Lawley, who are, um, they have YouTube channels and they do everything on the iPad and they, you know, write all about the iPad. Renee Ritchie has talked about it. He has not found any. He does not think that Luma Fusion or iMovie, he said iMovie is um, easier to use but and faster. Luma Fusion is not powerful enough. Um, so really, I'm surprised he says that it does do the things that uh, John wanted. Uh, it does do it does multiple uh, tracks. In fact, you can see I'm doing timeline editing on Luma Fusion right here. Uh, it also has audio tracks, transitions for news for what we used to call in the news business A B cutting. Um, I think it's fine, and that's what he was doing in his uh, video. By the way, nice job, John. I I appreciate that. I think Luma Fusion is actually a pretty good choice. I'm surprised that Renee said it doesn't do. It isn't Final Cut, and and the and the really the tough one's going to be for you uh, is this compressor issue. Compressor is the program that's used by uh, Final Cut to export video, and uh, you're absolutely right. This is this is not going to give you a variety of choices. In fact, what it what it offers you when you when you say export is merely a variety of cloud services. Um, let's see if we can get different formats out of here. We can get project settings. Which, which actually, I think this is this is going to be nice um, for a few of the things you want to do. You can choose the aspect ratio, and you're on TV, so probably you're going to choose something more like 4.3 than 16.9, that kind of thing. Frame rate as well. But I don't see anything to say, hey, I want to export this in uh, MP5 instead of MP4 or that kind of thing. Uh, you notice it does work with a lot of... Um, 
uh, external sources, including Western Digital Drives. So you can, uh, you if you had a Western Digital Drive that had a Wi-Fi connection, you could bring in assets that way. Maybe your lower thirds or your channel ID, that kind of stuff. It does have titles, transitions. You can bring in music from iTunes. Um, I'm not sure what Gnar Box is. It sounds like it's probably like the uh, Western Digital uh, Wi-Fi Drive, just another uh, source for uh, content. That's Luma Fusion. The other one that uh, probably is not what you want is Muse Mage, which is really designed to uh, kind of automate the the process. Which I I think probably is not for you exactly what you're going to want. This is kind of more of a simple editor, but it is a, it is an interesting touch on there. I would look at Muse Mage, Luma Fusion, um, and uh, and maybe even iMovie will do the stuff you want. It's the exporting that you're going to. Be, I think, a little disappointed in all three cases. And I don't think that that's really a, uh, because of the um, uh, apps as much as the limitations of the iPad. This thing is more than fast enough to, to do some of the things Compressor does. But you're not going to get ProRes out of this. You're, you're probably not going to get, you know, a variety of different codecs. It's going to be, uh, it's gonna be you know, the native iPad codecs, and that's it. Yeah, I think that uh, once we see what Photoshop, the real Photoshop on the iPad looks like, I think that might be able, we'll be able to tell what the future is going to bring. Yeah, well, the question was, is Adobe going to ever put Premiere on there? And I would think Apple before Adobe. I mean, it, well, Apple should, this is where it's kind of a funny thing. I don't, I'm not convinced, well, we've talked a lot about whether Apple is going to replace Macintosh with iOS and iPad. Um, and in order to, if they did do that, they would have to, absolutely have to, um, uh, put things like Final Cut out. Photoshop would have to come out. I don't. It, 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 Adobe's not going to put Premiere on on the iPad Pro, and I. And so really, it's going to be up to Apple, I think, to put Final Cut. When you see Xcode and Final Cut on an iPad, then you know Apple's beginning the transition uh, to replacing, uh, uh, you know, Macintosh with iPad. There is a new product project come that's come out from Adobe that is in early stages that maybe is intended to be Premiere. And you see, I have it also. I have all of them. Uh, this is Adobe's Rush. And this is intended to be a video editor in the cloud. That's why I don't mention it, because mm -hmm. he said, I don't have cloud connectivity. Uh, the idea of Rush is it's, about, it's all about online. It's going to have more capabilities, perhaps. But if you don't have connectivity, it's not going to be much help. To you, so yeah, I think really you're probably going to want to get a laptop. I hate to say it, John, but that's uh, that's probably the best way to do it mm -mm. for now. For now, until Apple puts, at some point, I think Apple has to put Final Cut on an iPad. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're not going to take the iPad seriously as a as a creation device.